Hello, my name is Lineu Castelo, and I'm speaking from Porto Alegre, that's a city in the south of Brazil, to participate in New York in this uh, conference about the changing cities. Uh, my, my profession is architecture. I am a teacher, I'm a lecturer, I'm a professor of urbanism at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul at the Faculty of Architecture, the postgraduate program in architecture named PROPAR. Uh, I, my, my field of studies uh, is uh, basically related to environmental perception in order to provide guidelines for urban design. And uh, basically, the, the, the basic concept I, I'm dealing with is place, place making and place marketing. Well, um, this uh, gathering, cities in a changing world, questions of culture, climate and design, I present a paper called Changing the City, Keeping the Context. Well, here are my personal data, Professor of Urbanism, PhD. Uh, I, I'd like to start by, by re re remembering that contemporary cities live in constant change. Contemporary cities reflect changes that occur in contemporary society. At this very moment, planet, R, planet Earth has almost 60% of its inhabitants represented by urbanites, that is, by humans who live in urban environments. Scholars claim that we have arrived at an Anthropocene period in the history of the Earth. That is to say, human activity started to have a significant impact on the planet's climate and ecosystems, predisposing an ill-fated period of human-caused environmental impairment. Problems of the Anthropocene are particularly keen in cities, cities where billions of urban people aim at living in harmonious conviviality through the use of urban places, which, alas, are getting progressively scarcer. Two of the most feared questions involving cities in a changing world are referred to in the single sentence, continual urbanization growth and the consequences of this growth upon the design of urban environments. This helps to fix the major objectives of my paper, namely to collect elaborations of, on urban architectural theoretical current themes, to review formerly known city design principles relating them to altered urban situations, and to consider innovative practices tailoring them to new urban circumstances. Contemporary urban societies are experiencing their everyday practices in new behavioral spaces. Chances are that this will produce new material needs in new spatial arrangements. So we have to combine new behavioral spaces in new spatial arrangements. Hence, it is within the professional responsibilities of urban designers, planners, and architects to deepen on investigations about these new behavioral spaces, pondering on which will be the newer spatial arrangements. This is what my paper intends to cover. Consequently, the paper will involve searching for new directions either from urban architectural theory, from city design principles, or from innovative urban practices, to which I will add comments based on sustainability and resilience. 
searching for new directions. Telling cities involves two simple basic circumstances, to invent and or to reinvent places. Recent literature in urbanism seems prodigal to offer practical examples of these two actions. Investigating them under two of their most ordinary urbanistic facets, that is to say, placemaking, in the case of inventing places, and residency, in the case of reusing empty constructions. Place is a central topic in urbanism and in my research work. Places are clearly represented through two major spatial configurational patterns, the production of newly invented places or the reuse of renovated residences. To easily visualize this idea, it suffices to recall well-known urban architectural symbols, real morphological features of contemporary urban design, such as, for example, Pudong area at Shanghai, China and Tate Modern at London, United Kingdom. Pudong infers at an introduction of new urban fragments to a consolidated urban fabric, though keeping under control any ensuing disorganized sprawl. Tate Modern reuses urban forms turned vacant by the obsolescence of certain uses, though integrating the recovered space, a new active functional fragment. Searching for new directions. From classic urban architectural theory, the paper chooses urban development and environmental sustainability. Here, the basic questioning will be, how to cope with urban development while keeping effective the environmental sustainability? Incidentally, it should be remembered that urban development is not just about ensuring the permanence of the physical environmental conditions. Environmental problems should also embrace psychological environmental concerns. To sustain the elements responsible for assigning meanings to a certain urban space, especially in areas where identity is so consolidated that people perceive them as places, it is essential to weigh them in contrast against sustainability goals. From the literature come three new assumptions for the enhancement of the environmental quality of urban life, technical, political, and humanistic. Technically, a re-examination re of key actions typical of the theory of place bring to light alternatives to best enhance built environmental features. Politically, the focus stresses on how to accommodate global strategies into local realities, which again sets for actions typical from the theory of place. The humanistic dimension is strongly affected by a phenomenological susceptibility hence requiring more sophisticated path to become best interpreted. Once more, strategies of the theory of place seem appropriate to be called in the scene since they perform quite positively towards obtaining this sort of goal. All three variables unquestionably converge to a single direction the convenience to make use of references from the theory of place. Therefore, from a rapid consultation to a list of classic urban architectural beliefs, the supportive role forward by the theory of place gains relevance. Excuse me.
Having in view the innumerable changes currently entering our area of urbanism, it is possible to distinguish a flux of incoming new supports, with some of them consistent enough so as to establish new ordinary routines within the profession. One of such methods includes the area of place making. Ideally, the making of a place merges design and management, both crucial factors for planning of today's urban features. Notwithstanding the sheer physicality of a place, the concept itself entails deep philosophical connotations, as observed by some prominent authors of the area, like, for instance, Edward Ralph, Edward Casey, David Simon, Ifutuan, David Graham Shane, Matthew Carmona, who, in the last a hundred years or so, theorized extensively about the possibilities of city design for the creation of new places. Nowadays, times when many communications take place take place in the instant formats of streaming media, it would not be surprising that the stimuli emitted by the energy of a place could somehow leak into its adjacent spaces, thus opening opportunities for the creation of a new place. I usually illustrate this phenomenon by showing a photograph I've taken while visiting Tate Modern in London, displaying an undeniable creation of a new place just beside the neighboring edge of the gallery. Here is Tate Modern, the, the, the wall of Tate Modern. Here is an adjacent territory nearby the Tate Modern, and here are people enjoying this territory as a new place which has been emulated by the energy coming from the presence of the gallery, which is notoriously a place in today's London. The first decades of the 21st century have already accumulated a collection of stimulating innovative urbanism and planning schemes. Fortunately, contemporary literature has already dealt with at least some of them, managing to gather some interesting propositions giving way to new revolutionary concepts. And these bring us to the final remarks of my presentation, which focuses on a selection of promising groundbreaking new methods, among which I, I highlight a single thread representative of the environmental psychological bias I am used to follow in my research work and have been identified in the literature through denominations such as Lose Space, as in a book edited by Frank and Stevens, or this more recent book on tactical urbanism, also compiling information gathered by Mark Laden Garcia, which has a subtitle Short-Term Action for Long-Term Change. And this one, in to which I include this new one, because it contains certain phenomena I personally call Place Licks. It is a book edited by Kevin Twaits, a professor at the University of Sheffield, UK, and his colleagues which includes mentions and explanations about my considerations about this new phenomenon I personally call place leaks. Essentially, all these works focus 
attitudinal urbanistic operations. That is to say, maneuvers that enhance the pragmatic possibilities of designing in a place-friendly mode, envisioning a sort of, say, placification in urbanism schemes. Finally, two influential factors debated on cities formed today, sustainability and resilience, must be colored here. Sustainability involves the engagement of sustainable development measures in urban policies. Resilience ultimately aims at preventing the premature discarding of constructions associated to the decay of certain urban functions. Resilient reuses obsolescent spaces and buildings, a practice more and more popular under the edges of placemaking, complemented by intelligent schemes of place marketing. In addition, resilience also presents the revival of urban celebrated elements, landscape elements, and contributes enormously to the preservation of the urban fabric's contextual sustainability. There is a, a, a con sustainability of the context. That's why my paper is called Changing Cities and Preserving the Context. This is a practice much praised in the professional works of uh, firms such as Allies and Morrison in London, in whose terms every building has a context that it both depends on and contributes to. That context isn't just a physical framework. It can be historical, it can be legal, and it can be strategic. As such, one must never look at a building as a singular object. This is an enormous lesson for every, every urban designer to learn on changes the cities they are designing. The visual of this film reinforces their contextual view, their contextual attitudes in relation to contextual sustainability in urbanism. I conclude with an anecdotal, though thoughtful, remark written by Andres Duaney, the ar architect uh, responsible for the design of a new urbanism city, Seaside, in Florida, United States, signaling to the contemporary practice of a so-called tactical urbanism. And it says, two wholly new urbanisms have emerged to engage the circumstances of the 21st century, tactical and XL, or extra large. This pairing shows that Rand Kohlhaas' prescient formulation of SML and XL, that is to say, small, medium, large, and extra large projects, is incomplete. It is missing. It is missing the excess, the extra small category represented by tactical urbanism. Decentralized, bottom up, extraordinary, agile, networked, low cost, and low tech. At this uh, time, I gather titles, bibliographical titles, that link places or the concept of place to changing cities. I put them on a list, and of course, I won't uh, name each one of them individually now because it's a long list, but uh, probably you could find them in the publication of this uh, article I'm presenting here today. Anyway, I just quote a few just to give you some examples. Robin Hamilton, uh, in his book Leading the Inclusive City, 
deals with place-based innovation for a bounded planet. Uh, Martin Heyer and Tom Dassen, two uh, Dutch uh, scholars, wrote the book Smart About Cities, visualizing the challenge for the 21st century urbanism. As I've already quoted Karen Frank and Quentin Stevens with their edited uh, book on loose space, possibility and diversity in urban life. I, this, to this I must add the interview the sociologist uh, Zygmunt Bauman and his daughter Irina Bauman, who is an architect, in Conversations on Housing and Planning, brought lights on these new situations of the redesign of contemporary cities. Uh, Washington Fajardo, in a published publication online in the newspaper El País, published in, 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 in Brazil, alerted us, Brazilians, about the great importance of place as a resource. His, uh, his article is named Lugar é Recurso, Place is Resource, and he clearly convinces us about this, uh, this need. Jane Lerner, the celebrated uh, Brazilian urbanist, recently uh, passed away, wrote Urban Acupuncture, celebrating pinpricks of change that enrich city life. A whole uh, study about um, doing uh, pinpoints in, in, in strategic places. Finally, Chuck Wolf, in his well-known book, offers a colorful display of interchange schemes about which what he denominates urbanism without effort. I think this is quite uh, a revealing condition for us that we can practice tactical urbanism, which in, at the end of the day is an urbanism without effort. I thank you for, atten for your attention and hopefully see you next time in another urban conference. Thank you very much.